Well, hello, it's Scott. I'm back from my trip to Mount Athos. It's cold, 19 degrees outside. My trip uh, started out uh, from Kansas City uh, to London. I think I shared with you guys earlier. And for a hint in terms of cost effectiveness for a trip like this, I know many people are like, hey, I'd love to go to Mount Athos, but it's kind of expensive. Well, I bought my ticket in July. I went on New Year's Eve. It was cheaper. I did basic economy on American Airlines from Kansas City to London. And then when I got to London, I just went ahead and took a flight from uh, London to Thessaloniki. Um, it was about a three hour flight. Once you're in Europe, I find that it's pretty inexpensive to get around Europe. So you might want to consider that if you guys are thinking of uh, going over there sometime. Now, a viewer has suggested uh, one of my past videos when I mentioned what I was going to do, that when I go to London, I need to go to Essex, um, which is a little ways outside London, to visit the monastery of St. John the Baptist, uh, an Orthodox monastery out there. And um, at the time, I just was planning on, you guys know I'm a gardener, uh, England gardens, right? Even in January, um, Kew Gardens or greenhouses, I was thinking, hey, I'll just hang out and, and visit some gardens. But I'm so glad you suggested St. John the Baptist uh, Monastery. I made a reservation with Father Bartholomew, who uh, uh, takes care of the reservations there. Very gracious. Um, I had a wonderful experience talking to Father James, uh, the services. And, um, you know, I will highly recommend uh, the evening prayers uh, when they do the Jesus prayer there that anyone who uh, is curious or uh, wants to visit the monastery, don't pass those up, those prayers, those evening prayers. I was blessed by it. Part of this process of uh, my trip, I did actually do some filming and, you know, I spent time setting the camera up. I found some decent locations with the running water next to me and a monastery behind me. And I was trying to think about the best way to present this to you. And as I look back on my videos, um, you know, my first trip to Mount Athos last January of 2019, I would say it was more of a trust and obedience kind of, uh, the doors opened, um, things happened. If you had seen my video, you kind of know that from then. And I just needed to follow through and to trust. This pilgrimage, um, beginning with St. John the Baptist and going on to Mount Athos, was more of, I need to now go deeper. And I need to experience some things and be prepared to experience some things. And it didn't disappoint. But as I went back reviewing my videos, I'm like, Scott, man, you're, you're really reflective. You're really deep you're really slow in terms of trying to explain things. So if you had been with me on the trip to Mount Athos and to London, you probably would ex understand my mannerisms and why I'm explaining things the way I am and how deep it was and personal. Uh, but in this format, you know, I don't think it was uh, appropriate. Plus a lot of things that happened to me are very personal and, and I'm, and I'm going to uh, keep them to myself, but I was blessed by it. And so once I went from um, London, I went ahead to Thessaloniki and another, you know, I'm kind of, you guys are interacting with me on this channel and I very much appreciate hearing from you. And so the first person told me about St. John the Baptist Monastery and then a Father Gabriel Amanis um, contacted me and said, hey, if you ever come back to uh, Thessaloniki, Mount Athos, you know, look me up. Um, the, he has a small uh, monastery in Malio Jorge in uh, Greece, which is basically between, take a bus to go to Mount Athos it's basically halfway, an hour into it, basically. And uh, it's right in the town, not too far from the bus stop. He was gracious. He said, come on out. Let's uh, talk theology. Let's talk um, the Bible. And let's just, uh, you know, he thought that we would have a good opportunity to get together and to share. And it, didn't, it did not disappoint me. Father uh, Gabriel um, is a warm man. I had many hours, wonderful hours, uh, talking theology with him. Um, learning about him, sharing my own experiences with him. It's small. Um, I, I think there might be 10 or so fathers there, um, including the abbot. Um, it's about 20 years old in terms of the building that they're in. It's a beautiful building. From American standards, it's very solid. I kept thinking it was ancient because it was very solid, but because being in Greece um, and earthquakes, everything is made with cement and rebar. But the sense was it's been here a long time, but it's as old as my house here. But um, 
you know, it was it was very impressive. They were very open, very warm. If you uh, spend time with them, and if you have a chance, and you want to do a little transition to Mount Athos, and I will say, um, looking back upon it, is that basically going to London and spending a few nights there at a monastery was just perfect. Then going to uh, Father Gabriel's monastery for a night, it helped. It helped transition me into what um, this pilgrimage was going to be about because I went during the old calendar so when I went um, they were getting ready to celebrate Christmas um, I think it's uh, January 7th I think that's right it's, it's Christmas there and so as I was going to Mount Athos um, they were on the fasting period and then they were getting ready to do some you know five hour and eight and a half hour long services and my transition to different monasteries, you know, really prepared me from just showing up and, and, and experiencing, but it was a blessing. So if you might want to consider that, if you go to Mount Athos to, you know, visit some places along the way uh, to, to get, take in um, those experiences as well. And I'm glad and grateful that you guys suggested it and that I was able to do that. So I went to Hillandar. And many of you guys know in the past, you've seen my videos again, so I'm sorry for referring back to my video, is that I met this uh, young American man last year, um, a Nicola, who was from Wisconsin, and he was there for 60 days, and he was trying to discern you know, where he should be, if he was meant to be at uh, Mount Athos or what have you. But part of my process, and again, you guys, guys know, I figured out uh, that he was at Hillandar, um, a monastery, and I got a chance to uh, meet with him again, um, spend um, uh, time with him, uh, talking, uh, walking, and it was a blessing to see him again and to see how God is um, working in his life and how, you know, by the providence of God, him and I uh, were brought together last year. And I think uh, as God willing, as we go forward, that uh, we'll continue communicating and uh, that was a very special time, and I was very grateful to be able to reconnect with him. Um, and now, I'm, you know, last year, of course, I was Protestant. I was a Calvinist, Reformed Protestant, and this year, um, I am Orthodox, and it was an experience. And, I, and to say a little bit about that, so last year I said that, and this is for those, I mean, Mount Athos is open to Protestants. They're open to, to anyone, basically, as far as I can tell. But they're limited to how many each day they allow on the Holy Mountain. And so the number is usually 10. Um, so that's not that many spots available for people who are not Orthodox to, to go. So it might take some planning, especially if you go during a major period of time or a major holiday or school break or what have you. You might find it it's difficult to get there. But go, because it is open. So last time I went, it was pretty much trying to figure out um, how things work. I did more exploring of orthodoxy before I showed up. And so definitely God used my, my understanding and discovery of Mount Athos, um, which I had no idea of it before I left or made my reservations last year. Um, he used it to, to, to bring me to orthodoxy. So if you're not orthodox, I would h highly encourage you to even go to Mount Athos. But last year was more of like, as I said, obedience, trusting that God opened the doors. But it was a it was a different world to me. But this year, being orthodox, you know, there was quite the camaraderie that I felt um, with you know Russians, with Serbs, Georgians, Greeks, Romanians. There were a lot of different kind of people there at different monasteries. Hilandar is an example of one. It was a Serbian monastery. Uh, they had a fire uh, a decade or so back, and they're in the midst of reconstructing um, a lot of this um, uh, the, monast the monastery. And um, but it was beautiful. It was a wonderful experience. They have great quarters for uh, pilgrims, um, and we uh, uh, were able to connect with people very easily. So you'll feel um, feel open to communicate with others. Is my point. You know, you might feel a little bit reserved if you're Protestant or not Orthodox. But I would just say that you know, trust that people will be warm to you as well, and not that you know you're different and no one will talk to you. I mean, you might get people who are not as open to you, but a lot of people were very open. And this is an experience this year where I didn't hike as much, but I pretty much was intent on allowing God to lead and to allow me to connect with people. And I did, and it was a blessing to me, and um, it was wonderful. So after a 
a day at Helendar and being with Nicola. I went to uh, Zonifondas. Um, I believe that's how you say it. Um, monastery, it's Greek. And um, my intent was to spend one night there. And I, went, I chose uh, Zonifondas because it's basically uh, a monastery dedicated uh, to St. George, who uh, is my patron. Uh, might actually have a medallion here. Um, and I wanted to, you know, connect or experience that. And again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail um, in terms of, you know, the blessings I received. I want to, but I, I think it's it's best that I just, you know, keep that personal, is that I was very touched and I'm very thankful that I went. It's a beautiful monastery. You guys know that I'm a gardener. You guys know I love being around plants. Um, and I had not been as on a fun as before. Um, and it, like I said, it was only because of St. George that I, I had gone there, but the grounds were spectacular. They had spent a lot of time. I kept walking. I kept wandering the, uh, the grounds thinking, you know, I want to meet the, the father who helped design this. And um, because it was beautiful, I, I enjoyed it, whether it was raining or whether it was sunshine. Um, and I met um, um, some, uh, some wonderful people. I got to meet uh, Father Jeremiah from Texas and spent some time in discussion with him about his past experiences uh, as a convert, uh, mine, and just, again, another American. And part of my process of going here was, um, basically, I was going to spend maybe three nights at three different monasteries, uh, and Zonifondas was my second one. Well, the weather had gotten really bad, um, and you might hear Xerxes and Fiji in the background. Um, the cage is open, they can fly out if they want to, so you might just see a bird wandering around here. But part of my process was to, um, after uh, my second night, to go to another monastery and do confession. I, I, in my mind, I had an idea that I knew there was an American father at um, Simon Petrus, um, Simon Peter of the monastery, and um, to go and, you know, he's actually what I heard from Massachusetts, where I'm from. And like, that'd be kind of cool, go to an American um, from Massachusetts and do my confession there. And that was my intent, uh, but the weather was bad, and I couldn't get to Gregorio Monastery, which was, supposed to be my, which was supposed to be my third one. And so as I'm going through this, I'm thinking, okay, you know, as you try to plan things, I'm thinking I want to do confession, but I'm trying to plan, and I'm thinking, okay, this, this might not allow me the opportunity that I need um, to, uh, to do my confession. So as I uh, was praying about it, thinking about it, um, and plus, I brought a suitcase. So if you go to Mount Athos, a backpack. If you can fit a backpack, but I came from Kansas City. And so I kept thinking, okay, I need to bring more things this time. So I brought a backpack and a really carry-on roller. But the problem is, once the uh, ferry wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't moving because of the wind, strong winds, um, I wasn't as mobile as I otherwise was last year. And so I stayed at the uh, Zanafondas uh, Monastery and spent time with, again, with Father Jeremiah, uh, helping prepare for the, uh, for the service that evening. Um, and then Father Gregory came in. And Father Gregory came in and uh, talked. And uh, during that time, I just mentioned I was looking for someone who could hear my confession. He, speaks, he uh, spoke, speaks really perfect English. Um, I wanted to find someone who could hear my confession and actually understand what I'm saying, although I was tempted a little bit to find someone who had no English, but that wouldn't be the purpose of confession, right? So um, during the service that night, it was an eight and a half, eight and a half hour service, um, he uh, found me and he said, George, which is my um, orthodox name, um, are you ready to say your confession? And, and we had a wonderful time in confession. So. I'm uh, grateful to Father Gregory um, that he heard my confession and that God opened the doors for me to do that while I was there. And so it was a wonderful time at uh, Zonafondas and then I realized once my confession was heard, I could return uh, to um, Father Gabriel's monastery and maybe just spend a couple of nights before I fly back to Kansas City. And I did and, and it was... <laughs> My bird's out. I did, and it was uh, a wonderful experience with him again. And they're separated. Xerxes one area, Fiji's somewhere else, and they want to be together. But they're upset with me. So um, I wanted to spend some time, you know, contemplating. And I will say that um, 
it was good because it allowed me to get a little bit into the rhythm only a couple of nights not that deeply into the rhythm of their uh, their uh, life but um, I decided when I came back Father Gabriel was very um, gracious and was giving me a gift of some uh, prayer beads you see there and of course there's a uh, icon uh, that he gifted me as well of Jesus um, but I kind of adapted you know the routine a little bit to my own personal life and this isn't to say you know hey look at me I'm, I'm, I'm living a certain way you should do this I'm saying that their prayers start at 5 a.m. in the morning and so um, it's very dark you know, candle lit and you know my my process at Mount Athos and St. John the Baptist really gave me a lot of more time in prayer and so I found that when I got home which took a lot longer than I thought because we had a winter storm in Kansas City um, I now I'm starting a process because I talked to Father Tim before I left I said you know I, I want a, a, a prayer rule I want something where I can pray throughout the day I feel God calling me to spend more time in prayer and so I, before I left I'd asked Father Tim to help me with maybe setting up I'm um, using a prayer book my own personal prayers but a routine and so what I find is been a blessing to me now is basically I get up at five and I say um, Shh, stop I get up at five o'clock my dogs my our neighbors leave in the garage and so Penley the Pomeranian sees a car moving and thinks it's you know someone's trying to break into the house so I got like a menagerie of animals everywhere, guys. So it's like, sorry for this. Maxwell, don't you start. And so my point being that at 5 a.m. in the morning, I went ahead and... Uh, the birds are out. I went ahead and um, decided to... Um, I went ahead and decided that I would start at five o'clock and I would try to keep that routine and see how it goes. So, so far, you know, so good. I don't know if I'll adjust it, um, but I'm here with the candles is dark and I'm able to use my, uh, you know, prayers or prayer books, my personal prayers, and I'm finding that it's um, satisfied. And the other end, the other spectrum, I eat new prayers, I do at nine o'clock, the same thing. Coming in here where it's dark, candle lit, and it's meditative. It allows me to, um, you know, think about the day, confess, praise, and um, and be ready for bed. So that's not to say, hey, you guys should do that. I'm just saying that part of my process of coming from Mount Athos and my own desire to go deeper into prayer, um, which I, I will, will say that I was blessed, God blessed me by, and of course would encourage his blessings on you as well by going deeper in prayer, especially the Jesus prayer, um, would basically be that you know, set aside more time for prayer, and, I, and I've been blessed by that. So, my video about Athos is pretty much me talking to you about what transpired in my plant room. Um, the videos that I had shot um, were not appropriate uh, in terms of the way in which I was expressing myself. It would have put you to sleep. You might be going to sleep now anyways, but it would have definitely put you to sleep with the other videos, uh, but it was a wonderful experience. Um, again, I would suggest anyone, if you're Orthodox or not, and you want an experience, you want to uh, see how God leads you, um, how you can be blessed, um, I would highly suggest, even if you're curious, um, there's not a place like Mount Athos anywhere else on earth in terms of a semi, uh, an autonomous region, religious community. Um, and so if you can make it out there, uh, please do. Uh, but I was blessed again, and I'm grateful to be home. I'm grateful to be back at church and the services, be with my family. Uh, but it was a blessing for me, and I just wanted to share with you guys uh, how this trip went for me. And uh, we'll talk to you on a future episode of Orthodox Gardener. Have a great day.